Hello and welcome to another exciting episode. Uh, this one we're going to be taking on the Max Counters uh, Codility Challenge. Um, what we need to do here is we've got a certain amount of n counters. So we're given n, initially set to zero, uh, that we can increase the counter, or we can perform an operation that sets all of the counters to the max value. Um, if the number is a number in our uh, up to n, then we will increment it by 1. And if it's above n by 1, then we will increment all of them to whatever the max counter is. So the example is we've got a 3, so we move in the third spot, a 4, we've got in the fourth spot, another 4, add another to the fourth spot, 6, which is out of the n range of 5. We increase all of them to 2, 2, 2, 2. So that's the highest here. And then continue onward 1 to 3, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is another good challenge because there are a few ways to do it wrong. Um, and we're just going to start doing it. Uh, and then we're going to modify it to make it right. So first thing we're going to do is I like to just print and look at the data that we're getting here. So what do we got here? Okay, so 5 uh, is the n, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 operations happening on it. So we know that uh, n is, uh, that the operation in a is always going to be within the range 1 to n plus 1. Okay, so let's think about that. Um, if it's n plus 1, it's going to make an operation on everything. So in reality, we just need um, a new array that's just 1 to n. Because if it's n plus 1, we're not actually adding it to the new array. We're simply uh, going to increment the whole array. So let's say our counter. I call it a list because this is Python. Counter list is going to be 0 times n. So let's make sure that looks good. And I'll just keep the n in there. So now we continue to look at our data. OK, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Perfect. It's got five counter spots. And that's great. All right. Now we need to go through and start iterating through all of these different uh, numbers in the array. All right, so let's iterate through. We're going to go through each i and a, and so let's see what that looks like. Yep, 3, 4, 4, which is all well and good, except that the truth is we really need it to be uh, one less because a list starts at 0 index, doesn't it, and goes until uh, uh, the length minus 1. So when I'm talking about this one, which is we need it to be number 1, it's actually index 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the first thing we need to do is actually lower this by 1. So let's see what that looks like. OK, cool. So the 3 gets turned into a 2, 4 into a 3. Very good. OK, so if the i idx is equal to n, so that's in this case, where it's 5, we're just going to do a little print max counter. There we go. See, it's going to print. That's uh, when it's going to experience the max counter thing. So we want it to do some set up some code for max counter. OK, but if it doesn't go to the max counter, we really want it to do this, where it goes set up code for a single counter. OK, so let's set up this one first, because that's going to be uh, the easiest one. So, um, so this is pretty simple. We want the counter list of idx to be equal to um, 
or plus equal one. Great. So that's uh, going to add one to each counter whenever it's incremented. So let's print counter list and see how it looks. Great. One, right? So we've got it going uh, three. Cool. We have four. There we go. Four. There we go. Six. Uh, that doesn't do anything yet. So we've got our little max counter thing going on. Um, one, again, deposits there. Four, again, twice. So great. That's working with a single counter. Except it's not doing the max counter uh, uh, thing that it needs to do. Okay. And there's also some problems here. But we're just going to get it done in a simple way. And then we're going to go and try to make it more efficient. So um, the max counter, what we could do is we could set counter list is equal to, um, you know, finding some max counter. So whatever we do, max of counter list, right? And multiply that by n. And this is going to work. Well, let me see if it works. Yes, yeah, so this is going to work. It sets it to 2 here, and that's the answer that we're looking for. Um, yeah, 3, 2, 2, 4, 2. That's correct. Here's the problem, though. We have a, um, a lot going on here. This is going to be recreating the whole list every time. It's going to be doing more than that, it's going to be cycling through the whole list to find out what the highest value is as well. So this line of code right here is literally n2, uh, n squared complexity, uh, time complexity. It's making a whole list and it's finding the max of the whole list as well. Yikes, that's, uh, that's way too much, way too much sweaty. No do that. So what we're going to do is uh, uh, some things to make this a little more efficient. And how are we going to do that? Well, let's get rid of some of these print lines because we don't need them anymore. We've verified all the information we need to. We're going to be changing this. We don't want it to change to the max of the counter list. What we want to do is we want to keep a um, um, a max counter going every time. So every time that we add to this, it's going to equal the max of oh, well. yeah my bad there we go of the current max or all right so see what we're doing here is we're keeping a counter that keeps track of what the current max is. So now we don't have to actually do this. We can get rid of one of those layers of complexity like that. And well, let's print it out to make sure it's right. Very good. The answer stays the same, but because we've included this counter, we are no longer cycling through every time. So this is all well and good, but we can become even more efficient if we need to. So we're going to add a second counter and we're going to call this one uh, max two. Or what do we call it? Let's say Max counter increase. Okay, that's a that's a fine name. It's a terrible name, but it's a fine name at the same time. So we're going to call that max increase two. We're going to also set that to zero to begin with. Now we're going to go through and oopsie doopsies. We're going to go through, get rid of these to do statements. And what we're going to do is this is still taking n1 time complexity to get through this. And here we're already in a loop, right? 
so it's kind of a n squared time complexity. It's better than it was before. It's dot cubed time complexity, which is even worse, but it's still not perfect. So instead, what we're going to want to do is we're going to use that max increase to, and we're going to change that like this. All right, which is good. So now this is going to keep track of what number to uh, increase this value to in the counter list. It's not actually going to do it. So if we run it now, you see it's giving us the old answer where it doesn't do it. So we still need to implement that functionality. And that's what we're going to do here. <clears throat> because the truth is it does not need to increase it unless it's actually checking that number. So we're not actually, it's like a lazy evaluation. Uh, hold on one second. Okay, and back to it. That's what I get for doing coding challenges at work. <laughs> so, um, all right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the value to either plus one of where it needs to be, or, uh, uh, you know, from where its last was, I mean, or we're going to add one to what the, uh, the increase was increased to. So if this was set to three, we're going to set it to three first. So equals, and then a max of, let's see like that and so like that now let's see it's not going to be a hundred percent right because there's one last thing we need to do right so it's right in the respect that it's added to the ones that we've checked but it still needs to go through and finally at the end outside of this first for loop and back in beautiful, normal, end time complexity, it's going to go through. Um, and it's going to get um, in uh, counter list. Uh, actually, in range length counter list. So we're going to take the index rather than the, the actual number. Um, and we're going to take and that, and we're going to set it either to the max of either itself or max increase to, like so. All right, and that should be right. Very good. Three, where is it? Yes, three, two, two, four, two. Okay, and let's return the counter list. And we are done. Now, we've managed to get it back down to n time complexity. It should be as fast as it's going to get. And this should be an acceptable answer. If we submitted it prior to this, then it wouldn't have worked. And the reason being is it's going to time out on those very long arrays. So you want to make sure again, just like in the last tutorial, that the time complexity has been reduced to, uh, well, as low as it possibly can, really. If it's possible to get a uh, time complexity of 01, and then we should do that. Uh, but failing that, we want to get log n. Or failing that, we want to get on time complexity. And so here you go. You can see 100%. He was able to run all the tasks, uh, or all the tests, I should say, including the extremely large. And if you uh, have not made it in this kind of time complexity, I would argue that it's ON, not ON plus M, but whatever, uh, then it will time out. But it hasn't. And we have gotten 100%. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed.